Hi, and welcome to a PowerShell quick tip video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the test connection commandlet. We've seen this in a few tutorials here and there just to simply check to see if a machine is up. Uh, but this time we're going to actually see some of the other functionalities that the commandlet can actually do because it can do more than just a simple uh, ping is what most people kind of use it as. But let's go ahead and let's see what the test connection commandlet has the ability to do. So we're going to start off with just the most simple functionality of the commandlet here, which is test connection. And we're going to pass it a target name. And I'm just going to pass it one of my servers here. So we can actually just do uh, JP hype V to 2022. And if we go ahead and we run this here, we will see but it does do a ping and it does it and it does do it four times. So the first thing that we can actually do is we can actually add a count here. So if I do a count of one, it will only do that test once. I can also do a test of 10 and it would do that test 10 times. The default is four. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind, uh, but we can do multiple tests. So that is fine. And there is also the option of repeat here, which if we go ahead and we run this, it will run the tests. And as you can see, it just keeps on going. Even though we didn't specify a count greater than four, it will actually keep going and it will keep going until you tell it to stop. And you can simply stop it by just holding down the control button and hitting C and that will stop the execution of the PowerShell script. Um, in case you didn't know how to stop a PowerShell script, that is how you would do it there. Um, so these are some neat little options that we can add to our test connection. We can also test connection on multiple endpoints here. So what we can actually do is test connection, target name, and we can actually do JP hype V 2002. Uh, 2022 we can also put in like google.com we can also put in facebook.com and if we go ahead and we actually just run these we will actually see so the first test is testing the jp hype v then we're testing google then we are testing facebook as well so you can do multiple endpoints to test them out this might be handy if you have multiple endpoints to test to make sure that they are all up and then you can simply store these results. But uh, that would be maybe a little bit less useful in terms of scripting procedures. Now, another thing that test connection allows us to do is also perform a trace route. So I'm going to do a trace route on my JP hype V. It's not going to be very interesting, um, but you will see that we are able to do a trace route in PowerShell. So we can actually perform a trace route here and we can hit run. The parameter is quite simple. It is just trace route. Now, the other thing that we can actually do with test connection that is a little bit uh, more handy, especially if you guys are in the security field, um, like networking security or just uh, cyber security in general, is we can actually test different ports to see if they are actually open. So once again, I'm going to be using my JP hype V 2022. I'm going to do that and make sure when you're testing ports, make sure that you do have permission uh, to test the ports. You might not want to test some random servers out there uh, as that can get your IP band, especially if you do multiple requests and you're starting to test a whole bunch of different ports here, but we can actually test some TCP ports. So let's go ahead and let's test the TCP port of 80, which for my machine here, 80 is actually not activated, but we're going to find out very shortly. So if I actually run this here, we will get the answer of false. So it is not open, but if we go ahead and we just run that same command, but now testing the port 3389, because I can actually RDP to this machine, we will see that we do get a true response back. So you can easily use this in an if statement of if the RDP is true, 
maybe perform some other tests, some other vulnerability tests to see if that target is vulnerable. Same thing for port 80 or any other ports. Uh, there is a bunch of a variety of tools online to show you the different vulnerabilities with the different ports. You can, of course, test machines that aren't Windows machines as well with the, this as well. Um, as long as you have the IP address and the port that you want to test, it will test it for you. Uh, so one of the other things that is very, very handy with Test Connection, and this is where we've probably used it in the past with our tutorials. I'm quite not 100% sure if I've actually shown this in the tutorial, probably in passing. Uh, but what you can do is you can actually use the test connection method as a kind of like an error check or a test before you start doing some PowerShell remoting. Uh, so you can do PowerShell remoting either by PS session or by invoke command. But before doing those, what you can simply do is actually add an if statement, do a test dash connection with the target name of JP type B 2022. And then what I like to do is I like to add a count of one and then quiet. So this will actually remove the output to the screen. So if we just run this, we will see that all we get is true back. Now we can of course add that to four now, the only thing is the longer the count, the longer it takes to perform that operation. I usually have it set to one. It pings that server once. If it gets a response back, it's true. If it gets a response that it doesn't get a response, then it is false and it doesn't try to do the PowerShell remoting. Now, if you have servers that, you know, maybe do give you unreliable uh, ping responses, maybe increase the count. I usually set it to one just to make it a little bit quicker. And then we can do an open and closing curly bracket. And then here you can simply put your new PS session with the computer name of JP type V 2022, and then just pass it a credential of administrator. And if we go ahead and we run this, so it will actually test the connection figures out that it's true. It is now prompting me for my credentials. So I can go ahead and put that in here and that will work. And quite similarly, if I pass it a machine name that does not exist, so if we do JPHIP 2001, JPHIP 2021, and we go ahead and we run this, we will see that we do not get a prompt for our username or password, uh, more of the password because we, we're passing in the username already. But we do not get that prompt as because the test connection has failed. And we can actually show that if we do an else statement, we can do a write output. Could not connect to the machine. And what we can actually do here is put a variable. This is what I would typically recommend. So let's create a variable of the server name. Let's put JP IP 2021. And all we're going to do is we're just going to paste this everywhere here. And now all we have to do is run this. And now we get could not connect to the machine JP IP 2021. If we do the 2022 again, we go ahead and we run this, we get the prompt put in our password. So that is the very handy feature of test connection. You can actually use it to check stuff before you try to do your PowerShell remoting. And this way you kind of just remove the error of not being able to connect to the machine that way. So that is really the most useful parts, at least that I use test connection for uh, myself is testing the ports, trace routing, doing all these sorts of different uh, counts and different pings. And also I use it to kind of just validate the ability to connect to the machine before connecting to it. That is pretty much it for this video for the test connection quick tips video. If you guys have any command lists that you guys would like to see in this video series, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will do a video on that commandlet. 
If you guys have specific parameters you guys want me to deep dive into, please let me know those as well. If you guys have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comment section down below. As always, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, also hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.